Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to have a live stream today, Wednesday, at 3 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And what we're going to talk about during that live stream are all of the things that I can find at least, and there's a very long list, of the things that we're not currently talking about that really we should be talking about. Instead of balloons, we definitely should be talking about you know what's going on in Ohio uh, you know pray for those people down there I call my brother and he's far enough away from where that happened where I hope that the wind direction doesn't affect uh, where he lives however we're going to talk about all the things that we should be talking about here in the United States instead of just the one thing that they want you to concentrate on nowadays balloons right and everyone's been talking about this balloons balloons right all of this you know there's so many things going on that the average person doesn't know. I'm going to cover one of those things on this video just so you can get a taste of what we're going to be talking about today during a live stream. Do you know that the United States still has an occupational force in Syria? The United States went to Syria. We went there for whatever reason, right? Remember it was because of weapons that had gas in them, you know, you know, gas and they were gassing their own people and all that kind of stuff. Well, I also remember the story where the young lady went to Congress, and I'll leave that uh, video linked, all right, upper right-hand corner, because that video uh, has a strike on it, it has a copyright strike, so I don't want to include it in this video. But uh, go ahead and take a look at that video about what she told Congress that the Iraqi soldiers were doing to the babies in incubators. And then, years later, after hundreds of thousands, if not over a million deaths in Iraq, and what our soldiers, our service members had to go through in Iraq, coming back home broken, turns out that that was all a lie. But it was enough for the American people to get behind the invasion of our Iraq. And now we know the truth, but now it's too late, isn't it? So we need to understand that we have to educate ourselves as best as we can to the truth of what's going on. You're never going to hear it from the mainstream media, so you have to look for these things yourself. But we went into Syria, I believe it was 2014, 2015, and we occupied about 30% of that country. And guess what part of that country that 30% was? It was where most of their fossil fuels were located. It's where their biggest oil reserve is located, their biggest natural gas reserve was located, and also where most of their water was located. Let's just take a quick look at this article. I'm not going to go very much in depth with it, but here it says, how the U.S. occupied the 30% of Syria containing most of its oil, water, and gas. And guess what? We're still there, ladies and gentlemen. My question is why? And why isn't the mainstream media talking about it? Why aren't congressmen and senators talking about it to the American people, saying, why do we still have service members there dying for their country in a country that never attacked the United States of America? And can we really trust the media or the government pundits to tell us the truth about why we went there when they've lied to us so much in the past? As is often the case in U.S. occupations, both historical and present, it is an effort born out of two goals. First goal, resource acquisition for U.S. corporations and the destabilization of a government targeted for U.S.-backed regime change. So what they're saying there is that they want resources for their cronies, right, for their, for their corporations, military industrial complex, the energy corporations, and they also want to do a change of government in that country. Isn't their country, is, is it our business, what kind of government any other country has? Ladies and gentlemen, why do we have to send our, our men and women to a different country to die for our country when it's none of our business what kind of government they have? And what kind of proof did we really get that the Syrian government was gassing its own people? What kind of proof did we really get? Did we get a little vial? A little yellow vial? Remember the little yellow vial? And if you don't remember the little yellow vial, it was that uh, little yellow vial. Uh, I think it was uranium. Oh, Iraq is getting uranium. General Powell, I believe, was his name. He betrayed his country, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't, I don't mean to speak ill of the dead. Or I mean, he rests in peace. 
But he betrayed his country by doing that. Everybody knows now that it was a lie. The area that they had control over and still do, ladies and gentlemen, contains 95% of all Syrian oil and gas potential, including Al Omar, the country's largest oil field. Prior to the war, these resources produced some 387,000 barrels of oil per day, 7.8 billion cubic meters of natural gas annually, and were of great economic importance to the Syrian government. Oil reserves estimated at around 2.5 billion barrels are located in the area currently occupied by the U.S. government. And this article is back about four years ago or so. The U.S. government and its proxies in northern Syria also control the Conoco gas plant, the country's largest. The plant, which can produce nearly 50 million cubic feet of gas per day, was originally built by U.S. oil and gas giant ConocoPhillips which operated the plant until 2005, and, and listen to this, after which Bush-era sanctions made it difficult to operate in Syria. So because of sanctions, those companies fled Syria, sanctions that we put on them. And the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, that sanctions don't work. I hope that you know this by now, right? You, I hope that you know this by now, ladies and gentlemen. Other foreign oil companies like Shell also left Syria as a result of the sanctions. With the U.S. now occupying the area, the oil and gas produced in this region are already benefiting U.S. energy corporations to which Trump and his administration have numerous ties. Why in the world were we there? You see, it doesn't matter who's in office, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter who's in office. All right, so please get that out of your head. Stop labeling yourself as the right or the left. It doesn't matter. It is a monster that we've allowed to get so big that it thinks that it can control everything in the world through force. Government is nothing but force. And it creates nothing but sorrow. And that is the truth that you can take straight to the bank. The U.S., along with the Saudis, Egypt, and Kurdish officials held meetings where decisions were made to extract, process, and market fossil fuels harvested in the region. So bring war to a nation, a nation that never attacked the United States of America. But what they, they might have been able to attack us if we didn't attack them first. Who knows? How do you know that? How do we know that, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's one of the arguments. I even got that argument from one of my lieutenants once when I was in Afghanistan. I said, sir, what the hell are we doing here? This was after being there for a while. I, I realized, I'm like, what are we doing here? And he says, well, who else is going to do it? Who else is going to come here and do it? I'm like, well, why does it have to be us? Well, in order to keep our country safe. And he was a young, a young officer, a lot younger than I was. In order to keep our I'm like, from what? In order to keep our country safe from who? Because whenever we went out on patrols, and we were like in a major city, which wasn't very often because it's very dangerous to do that. But when we were in like very populated areas and we were out on patrols, you know what I saw? What's the one thing that sticks in my head? That most of the people, if not more than 99% of the people, like in the town squares, and they used to be full of people, were males, fighting age males that were not fighting for their own country. So if they were not fighting for their own country, against this boogeyman that we created, why in the world would they go all across the world to fight against us? And this here article is from August of last year, 2022. Why does the U.S. still have forces in Syria? The United States air attacks on targets, it says, were associated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in eastern Syria have put the spotlight once again on the continued presence of U.S. forces in the country. So they're still there, at least as of August of last year. Why is nobody talking about this? Why is no one talking about this, ladies and gentlemen? Did you hear about this right here? Does anyone know this young man's name? Did anyone see this picture on the mainstream media? Saying we lost another soldier in Syria. This was back in uh, February of last year. This young person who will never live life, will never be able to have a wife, a child, whose mother, father, brothers, and sisters 
probably still cry for him to this day. Have you ever heard about him? No, ladies and gentlemen, because the oil is more important. Let's go take over another nation and let's go make up crap about what they're doing so that we can get their oil and we can fill up our gas tanks for cheap. When we have the resources right here in the United States to be able to fill up our gas tanks for cheap, but our leaders refuse to use our resources so that we can go ahead and get it from other countries that don't like us. Again, I hope that uh, you all join me this afternoon. Wait a minute. I got one more thing to show you. It's all about democracy, right? Because if we went to Syria, I'm sure it's because the American people say, yes, we need to go to Syria because it's all about democracy. You know, if we're going to go attack another country, the American people should be like, yeah, let's go attack another country. Check this out. This was a poll that was conducted before we went to Syria, before we went to Syria. Overall, Americans at this juncture are more likely to oppose 51% to not go to 36% to go to Syria. So I guess that is, I, I, guess the, I guess it was opposite day. On the day that they took that poll, it must have been opposite day for the government. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you say as a lowly citizen of the United States of America. As long as we have a democratic government that can sell votes, it no longer matters what you think, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why you need to prepare. That's why I'm always saying, prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, and I know that for a while now, I've been shifting to more commentary videos like this than prepping videos. There really is only so many ways that I can show people how to put beans and rice in a bag and oxygen absorbers and put it away, right? But these things are things that we need to know that should encourage us to look further into that rabbit hole so that we can be encouraged to prepare even more. Because one day there will be an end to all of this. There are so many things that we don't know about because we don't hear about them. Well, today during our live stream, we'll talk about that. Hope to see you there. Again, it's going to be at 3 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Hope I hope that those of you that aren't able to join in on Fridays and Sundays can join in today. Other than that, I hope that you're having a great day, ladies and gentlemen. There is hope. You know why there is hope? Because we still have red-blooded American patriots that are willing to stand up to this and talk about it and share it. And I believe that the only way that we're going to win this fight is to be as best prepared as possible. Because there ain't nothing that we can do about that monster now, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that I'm wrong 100%. But I think that I'm right. That monster called government it's gotten way too big. And the only way that it's going to fall is when it takes itself out. But along with that, it's going to take the entire country out. Have a great day. God bless every single one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.